Uh, this week, we'll talk about the basics of the statistics that I believe that uh, you all have learned from your statistics class and also some uh, non-spatial visualizations. So the basic of visualizations, I think um, that you, you may have learned from your statistics so that how we can analyze uh, those non-spatial data. Um, so first, so let's review those classical statistics. So those descriptive classical statistics um, can help us to understand the data. So like uh, when we have those non-spatial data and also information that how we can understand the, those data. Um, so the first distribution uh, versus a relationship. Uh, so the way that we want to understand the distribution of a single variable, um, normally we're using the measure of the central tendency and also we can measure uh, the dispersion. So the, for the central tendencies, we can calculate the mean value, uh, median value and also mode. And also for the dispersions, we can calculate the variance and also standard deviations. So that is understand uh, the distribution of a single variable. Okay, uh, so if we want to see the relationship among many variables, uh, so the most simple is the one is we can calculate uh, the correlation. So we can calculate the correlation coefficient, uh, which is a, var a value between zero and also one. Okay, or sometimes we can have negative one, zero, and also one. Okay, so that correlation. And of course, we can have used, uh, we can use other methods to investigate the relationship, uh, like we can use regression models um, and also other advanced uh, statistic tools. Okay, uh, so if you're interested in uh, uh, how to investigate the relationship among variables and also uh, uh, all from a single variable so you can um, take my uh, intro to machine learning class so that right now the cost number is I uh, 480 okay so where this class we are dive deep into the uh, mathematical models and also how we can um, understand the relationship among those variables and also make predictions. So I-480, so that is the intro to machine learning and, and also artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, so measure of the central tendency. Uh, so to measure the central tendencies, normally we have those three very popular variables, like the mean value, that's just average uh, of all the value of all the data so uh, that is average median is a middle value of all the values when you sort in a descending or ascending order okay and the mode is the most frequently occurred value okay so that is a mode so for example if we have a set of numbers like one two uh, two two three okay so one two 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 three uh, in this case, two is a mode because uh, we have three twos uh, in this case. Um, the average, uh, I cannot give you average very fast, but the average is just one plus two plus two plus two, and that is seven and also 10. So that is 10, 10 divided by uh, five. It is also two, okay. It is also two, so that the average is two, the mean value is two. The median, so that is you just sort the values, okay. Okay, and in this case we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five values, and the one that in the middle will be the median. Okay, so it is also two, so that is mean, median, and also mode. Uh, one unique feature of the median is that the median will not be influenced by its outliers. So in this case, we can see that we have two groups of values and also for the second group, so we have an outlier. Okay, so that means the second group is more dispersed and the first group of values is more concentrated around the mean values. Um, the second group definitely has a different mean value. However, the median value for the two groups 
will be the same because um, the medians will not be influenced by the outliers. So for, for example, that is why that uh, when we measure the income, okay, and normally we will use a median household income. So that is because it will not it, it will not be influenced by those outliers. So not be influenced by the extremely rich people or the extremely poor people. Okay, so that is uh, the unique feature of the median. Uh, talking about dispersion, so that matters that how the values are concentrated or scattered. So uh, if we have value, like if we see, if we look at the, for example, the histogram, so if the value is like all concentrated uh, within a small range, so it is more concentrated. Uh, if we look at value that again, see the histogram that is distributed uh, widely across a uh, multiple range. Okay, so that is the more scattered. Okay, uh, so here we have different measures. So range is the difference between the smallest and also largest. So that is range. Variance is the average of the squared difference between each value and their mean. So if the data is more dispersed, uh, it will have high range and also high variance. Okay, and if the data is more um, concentrated, it will have a low range and also low variance. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Okay, uh, so because that is easier to interpret, because sometimes the variance is is very huge, so we uh, we get the square root of the variance, so that is easier to interpret. So standard deviation and the variance are talking about the same thing. But standard deviation is easier to interpret. Uh, so here are the formula to calculate the variance and also to calculate the standard deviation. Uh, so I don't think we need to remember the formula uh, because in ArcGIS Pro and also in the other tools, data analytic tools, so they always provide those functions that are SPSS, so some other statistical tools. So you can just calculate those. Um, Mirrors very easily, so you don't need. I don't think we should. We can. We should remember those formula. Okay. Uh, so correlation is one, probably the simplest way that we can mirror the relationship between two variables. Okay. Uh, so that is a correlate uh, correlation, and the most popular correlation mirrors is called correlation coefficient. Um, correlation coefficient is a unit list, and the data is always between negative one and also um, positive one. So if that is negative one, they are perfectly anti-correlated, and if they have positive one, that is perfectly correlated. And if the value is zero, that means they don't have any kind of correlation. Again, so I'm providing the formula here, but it's very easy to find out the formula if you search online and also if you use any data analytic tools and uh, correlation is also easy to be calculated. So I don't think we, we, we need to remember those formula. So here, this is a visualization that shows that how the correlation, different um, values of correlation. So here we can see that if X and Y if they have correlation, it's like positive 0.4, so they are positively correlated. So that means when x increase and y also increase. Okay, when x increase and also y increase. If x and y have a correlation coefficient that is zero, so that means there's no correlation. So we can see if when x increase and y, the y might increase or might decrease. So there's no significant. Um, obvious relationship between x and y. And this shows a negative correlation coefficient. So we can say when x increase uh, and y decrease. OK, so, so those are the three examples. Something that keep in mind that uh, first, the correlation coefficient only capture the linear relationship. OK. Uh, so if there are two variables that have zero uh, coefficient, uh, 
correlation coefficient, it just means that they have no linear relationship. Okay, so in this case, we can say x and y. Uh, so y is the absolute absolute value of x. Y is the absolute value of x. And if you calculate the correlation coefficient, the co um, correlation coefficient will be zero. Okay, but it just it doesn't mean that they are not related. So they are still related, but they just do not have a linear relationship. Uh, the second concept to keep in mind is that they cannot tell you that how large the relationship is. So here we can see we have x and y, and x and y are perfectly correlated in this case. But you can see x has very small values, and also the y variable have great values, big values. So it cannot tell that how large the uh, the relationship is. So in this case, it means mean nothing okay it might just you know um, some noise uh, x might just be some noise and the y might be just pretty stable but because uh, y is uh, very bigger than x so that's still you know, they have a, they are perfectly correlated okay so uh, so if they are correlated but you cannot tell do they have a um, how large the relationship is. Okay. Um, the last thing that keep in mind is that uh, even x and y are strongly correlated. It might mean that x cause y, or it also mean that y cause x, or it might mean that x and y are both caused by another factor, probably z factor. It also means just nothing. So it might just um, co coincident that X and Y are highly correlated. Okay, it also might mean nothing. So for example, here we have this um, example that we can see that uh, X and Y the variables that one is the ice cream seal and another is a shark attacks. And if we plot those two variables on the line chart and then we calculate their correlation coefficient, you can see that the correlation coefficient is very, very high. However, they are definitely not related with each other. So uh, the common sense tells us that uh, if you sell more ice cream, it does not mean that you will, there will be more uh, shark attacks. So it might, mean not, it might mean nothing between X and Y. Even X, Y are highly correlated.